During the season of Advent, as we have gradually set up the nativity scene, we have been recapitulating, that is, summing up, salvation history, the plan of God for mankind. Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, is actually the feast day of St. Adam and St. Eve. According to Genesis, the devil won the first battle, but was not destined to win the war. The seed of the woman, a descendant of Adam, would be victorious over Satan, and there would be a return to paradise. Our Christmas tree actually originated as the paradise tree, as a prop for the Christmas Eve mystery play. At the start of Advent, the empty and darkened stable represented the house of humanity after the fall of Adam and Eve. The stable also represented the Ark of Noah, through which mankind and creation was preserved in the midst of the flood of God's judgment, and then given a pledge of God's faithfulness and grace. Then, on the second Sunday of Advent, we saw God's rescue operation begin. The first shepherd represents Abraham, our father in faith. At that point, the stable recalls Abraham's tent in which the cradle was empty till God sent him Isaac, the promised son. Isaac himself, bound on the wood for sacrifice, prefigures Christ our Savior on the cross. The second shepherd represents Moses, whose birth and infancy prefigured that of the Christ child. The manger, that is, the feeding trough, reminds us of the little floating ark of bulrushes made by Moses' mother, in which she placed the baby Moses, upon whose survival Israel depended. In the same way, the baby Jesus depended on his mother Mary, who laid him in the manger as his cradle. The third shepherd reminds us of David, the young shepherd from Bethlehem, who was anointed king by Samuel. God promised through the prophet Nathan that the house of David, that is, his royal family through the generations, would endure forever. The poor stable in Bethlehem then symbolizes for us the ruined state of Israel's royal house, for it had fallen from the kingship centuries earlier. The presence of the figures of Mary and Joseph, descendants of David, tells us that God is repairing and rebuilding the house of David. When the angels say to the shepherds, To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, this was a surprising term for Bethlehem. The term city of David normally referred to David's capital of Jerusalem, not to his hometown of Bethlehem. To call Bethlehem the city of David is to say that God is restarting David's kingdom in its place of origin, on a new foundation. That foundation is Jesus Christ himself, the true king, the promised and awaited son of David. All of these biblical symbols and types find their fulfillment in Christ's lowly manger bed, for the universe was created to be the cradle of the God-man, of Jesus Christ. St. John's Gospel says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The actual expression that St. John uses is more homely than that. What the text says is that God the Word pitched his tent among us, full of grace and truth, when he was made man in the womb of Mary. The Nativity in Bethlehem is an icon of the new Garden of Eden, with the Holy Family as the nucleus of a restored human family, gathered together around the Christ child. All creation adores him, including the angels and the beasts of the field. The three wise men represent the Gentiles, who have now found the one whose star they had followed. This is the hidden plan of God, now made manifest, of which St. Paul spoke when he spoke of the mystery of Christ now being revealed, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. There is Eucharistic symbolism, too. Christ, our Redeemer, is the bread of life, 
come down from heaven, and he is laid in the manger. The manger is not the stable itself, but rather the feeding trough within the stable. Our Lord's cradle is like the Holy of Holies within the true temple of the world and of mankind, symbolized by the stable. The holy manger, no crib for a bed, as the old carol says, now holds the living bread come down from heaven. The very word Bethlehem means the house of bread. If you listen to the words of the old Christmas carols, you will see the same theme of redemption and paradise restored. And then there are these final wonderful words from joy to the world. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. You see, the coming in the flesh of Jesus Christ, the new Adam, turns the curse of the old Adam's sin into blessing. As St. Paul wrote to the Romans, where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. All creation is redeemed in Christ's kingdom. Paradise is restored, beginning in the stable at Bethlehem. And the holy child in Mary's arms brings us there.